time, my name is Alexander Matushantsev, and I'm a principal software engineer at Intuit. And I'm a long time maintainer of Argo. So as Henrik said, I've worked on pretty much all of the projects. And my, my focus right now is Argo CD. And uh, my co-speaker is Jesse. <coughs> he will talk about himself very soon. First few words about company I'm working for. So I work for Intuit, which is a US-based tech uh, fintech company founded in 1983. And we are proud builders of uh, products like TurboTax, uh, QuickBooks, and, uh, and Mint. And so we serve 10,000 million uh, customers from all the segments. And Intuit is a CNCF gold member. Next, I'll let JC continue. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jesse Soon, and I am an Argo project lead along with Alex. I'm also co founder of a company called Acuity, which we just launched this week. And Acuity provides vendor supported distribution of Argo as well as support and services around the Argo project. Uh, so, if we, before we get into it, it's always useful to start and explain what the Argo project is at a high level. And Argo is a collection of Kubernetes native tools and all focused on the area of application delivery. And it's comprised of four main projects, CD, rollouts, workflow, and events. And each project is focused on a specific use case. And they're all designed to, you, uh, to be used standalone with loose integrations between the projects. So you might be wondering, like, how did we end up with four like, loosely coupled projects and then a collection of ecosystem projects? And it all comes down to some design philosophies that we share uh, about the project. And so we believe that all, each project should stay focused on a specific use case and, and solving that use case very well. For example, Argo CD is all about delivering manifests from a Git repo to Kubernetes clusters. And a few years back, we had this uh, need to do you know, blue, green, and canary deployments on Kubernetes. And there was this push to to have that functionally baked into Argo CD. But the more we thought about it, it felt like it was out of scope uh, from what Argo CD was originally aimed to do. And the approach could be considered too opinionated. Uh, it maybe uh, make it Argo CD too, com too complex. And so we decided to develop it as a separate project. Um, and that became Argo Rollouts. And we felt like that was a great decision because today, we have you know, a lot of people who like to use Argo CD, but they don't, they don't need Argo rollouts. And then we also have users who use rollouts, but they don't use Argo CD. And so you kind of get to pick and to, uh, choose the tools that make sense um, for you. And our second point is that even though we are focusing on single use cases, we still want this, this great but complete user experience. Um, and this means adding those extra features that make our users' lives easier. And for example, that's why we have like a, a pretty heavy focus on like UI because it just uh, adds so much more to complete that user experience. Um, and finally, as we're adding this new functionality to um, these projects, we still want to maintain that these projects uh, be lightweight and uh, as possible and, and avoid bloat. So, a lot of the times, these principles are kind of at odds with each other. Like we're always getting requests for new features um, for, for valid use cases. But at the same time, we want to do it in a way that doesn't keep uh, creeping and bloating up the project uh, beyond its original scope. Um, you know, that adds to uh, project complexity and fragility. So the question is, how can we make improvements to the project but keeping the core projects lightweight and stable. So it turns out that Kubernetes has this pretty good mechanism for adding features to resources uh, in an indirect way, which is annotations. And annotations allow us to effectively expand the spec of a resource, but without implementing uh, the functionality into the core controller logic. Uh, the whole idea is that you can write your own controller which monitors those same resources and then adds functionality uh, based on those annotations. And, but we think one of the biggest benefits of adding features this way is that it allows us to implement uh, features in completely independent projects. And why is this a good thing? 
Well, um, the first is it, you get a much higher development uh, velocity. By having a separate project, you can iterate faster on that idea. You can have a, a completely set, a separate set of maintainers. Um, you're freer to experiment and make breaking changes uh, without you know, impacting the, the, the core users. You can give earlier access to those features since you, you're not tied to the release cadence of the main uh, projects. And if the idea doesn't pan out, then it's, it's okay to abandon it. Like, compare that to if we decided to implement that feature in the core project, and if that didn't pan out, it's much harder uh, you know, to remove features once it uh, reaches the core. Um, this all helps to keep the main projects lightweight. Um, as a separate project, the component is optional, and so users who don't need or want that feature, they don't have to install it. And finally, as these projects mature uh, and become more stable and gather momentum, there's always that option. We can, we can always uh, formalize that and bring it into the main project down the road. So um, we formed this sister organization. It's called Argo Proj Labs. And this is a place where we can host ecosystem projects from the community that uh, complement the core projects. Uh, this is a place where the community can collaborate on new ideas, new features, uh, but it also provides a way where others can discover these useful add-ons. And, and Labs acts like this incubator of these experimental features that we want to explore, but maybe we're not quite sure of. So um, as of today, we've actually accumulated over three dozen ecosystem projects. Uh, some didn't pan out, but others are quite popular. Um, and we're now at a point where we're considering um, including some of these uh, popular ones as part of the core projects. And today we'll be going over a handful of some of these projects that enhance the Argo CD experience. Alex will be giving a demo of, of how you can get more out of Argo CD uh, with these add-ons. Uh, the first project we'll be demoing is uh, Argo CD Image Updater. And this is a tool which monitors your container registry for new image tags that get pushed. And when a new image tag gets pushed, uh, when it detects that it's newer than what's running, the image updater can actually write back those changes into your Git repo so that Argo CD can deploy them. Um, and the benefit of this is that your, your CI pipeline, it, it can remain completely disconnected from your, um, either your Kubernetes cluster or your Argo CD server. Um, with all updates being facilitated by image pushes. Uh, next, we have application sets. And the use case here is, is if you've been using Argo CD for some time, you might have felt the need to automate the creation of m many applications. For example, maybe you run hundreds of clusters and you need that same application um, installed in each of those clusters. Or another reason could be Maybe you have this um, mono repo with all the things you need to install, and you want to create an application for like every directory in that mono repo. And application set is a controller which helps automate uh, this process and create um, what we call sets of applications. And there was actually a talk on this uh, yesterday uh, by Jonathan Wesson and Shama. And if you missed that, I encourage you to watch that um, uh, when it's uploaded. Uh, notifications, this is a project that allows you to become notified about state changes of your applications. For example, with notifications, you can get a Slack, email, PagerDuty, notification anytime, um, say, one of your application degrades, has configuration drift, or maybe every time just someone clicks a sync button. And we also have a, a deep dive on this uh, uh, service tomorrow that Alex will be talking about. So um, and I think you'll want to attend this because you, this project is actually useful, not just for Argo um, resources, but you can actually incorporate this uh, into other custom resources as well. And uh, the last one we'll be going over today um, is Argo CD extensions. And this is something we're really excited about. Um, so Argo CD extensions is, it provides a way for users to add new visualizations to Argo CD UI. Um, by lo and it, it loads it at runtime. Uh, so the backstory around this feature is that uh, as heavy rollout users, we wanted a way to bring uh, the roll rollout-specific visualizations into the Argo CD uh, interface 
uh, because if uh, end users, if they're just looking at the spec, it's really hard to understand you know, what's going on. It's, it's not really user friendly. And originally, we were going to give special treatment uh, for Argo rollouts and, and bake that in directly into the Argo CD code base. But the more we thought about it, we felt like we could do this in a more generic fashion and support custom visualizations for any type of custom resource. Um, so we came up with this new architecture where that allows users to uh, build and package their own UI components um, for any Kubernetes resource and for that visualization to be presented into the Argo CD UI. Uh, and so now Alex will be demoing all these add-ons and you'll be able to see these things um, in combination in action. Awesome. Thank you, JC, for awesome presentation. Let me stop sharing the slides. Cool, and I want to validate you see what I see. All right, and little preparation before the demo. Okay, so uh, as Jesse mentioned, we are going to go through uh, Argo CD specific add-ons. And so we thought that uh, one demo was a thousand words and instead of explaining you details and showing you slides, we can just show you all of these add-ons in action. So before I <clears throat> start the demo, I just wanted to highlight that uh, this URL is a public GitHub repository URL that uh, has all the materials you need to do the demo yourself. So if you're interested, just clone it and use the readme file. It has all the descriptions of all the steps. And one thing you would have to do is to go through some preparations. Of course, you're going to need some Kubernetes cluster and pretty much any cluster works. Uh, this is what I did. I just <coughs> configured uh, a K3S cluster. Minikube would work or any other cluster. Next, you are going to need some credentials. Uh, so <coughs> Argo CD is going to communicate with Slack, with GitHub, and so you will have to create tokens. And I wrote some detailed instructions about how to get those tokens, one for Slack, one for GitHub, and a small snippet to upload these secrets into the Kubernetes. And finally, you will need Argo CD because it's kind of a tool to drive the demo. And so it's just easier to, to do the demo and see what's happening using Argo CD. And just for the sake of time, I did it. I already have it running on, on my uh, Minikube. And so we are here right now. So we are ready to take a look at Argo CD UI and start you know, using it. Let me go ahead, open the URL. And so <clears throat> uh, if you don't know, this is how Argo CD user interface looks like. As soon as you install Argo CD, so there is an empty page, uh, no applications, and we are about to create few. And <clears throat> before I create, I kind of want to explain like what am I trying to achieve. And so my goal is to um, use this GitHub repository to represent the target state of my cluster uh, and manage it. And there are different ways you can do it. Uh, I chose to just create a folder per namespace. And each folder here, so it represents a namespace in the target cluster, and it has some manifests. And so this is one example. So we have uh, Argo CD folder, which represents Argo CD namespace, and as you can guess, it has Argo CD YAMLs. I didn't want to copy a bunch of YAML files, so I just use customize uh, config management tool to pull a lot of manifests together. And this is it. This is the uh, customize uh, YAML file. It includes Argo CD stable uh, manifests. It includes one uh, <coughs> installation manifest for application set, one for image updater, and for all other add-ons. And this is pretty much, you know, part of a demo. Like you, this explains to you how you can get add-on installed in your Argo CD. It's like we're trying to make it as easy as possible, and in a perfect case, it's just one YAML file. Uh, okay. So next, I think we're kind of ready to start using Argo CD and create applications and start, you know, pull these manifests into the target cluster. If you're a user of Argo CD, you kind of know one way to do it already. Typically, you can uh, switch to Argo CD user interface and create new application by clicking new application button. You would have to fill some information here, specify the repo URL and so on. And this is maybe not the best possible way. You can as well automate this process using scripting, using Argo CD API CLI, 
but I am going to demonstrate you how you can use application set to, to do it. And so I will just go ahead and, and use app set to create applications. I'm going to run a kubectl command just for the sake of time. And then now I'm going to switch back and explain what I just did. So I just kubectl, kubectl applied a file and that file is in the same repo and it has uh, application set spec. And so this application set is supposed to generate applications in Argo CD for each and every folder it finds in, in, in the Git repository. And so if you remember, I had four, four such folders and it's supposed to create those applications. The folder name goes into the application name as well as into the target uh, namespace. And plus I configured these apps to self-sync. Like as soon as apps, applications created, they should just create resources. If namespace is missing, the namespace will be created. And hopefully if all went well, yeah, we've got four applications as expected. So application set created these apps for us. And so uh, <coughs> we have one for Argo CD, we have Argo rollouts, we have ingress, uh, because I, I needed it for my demo. And we have one application that I want to focus on. It's a demo app, it's still syncing. I know the reason is basically my ingress not yet up and Argo CD keep basically retrying to create ingresses so that uh, eventually, uh, basically as soon as ingress controller mutating hook is up, uh, ingresses will be created. Done, so basically, yeah. Uh, I should step back, I think, and explain what you are seeing. If you are not a user of Argo CD, you might not know, but this is uh, Argo CD application details page. And the goal of this page is to explain to you uh, which resources are part of your application. And so uh, you, might find see, uh, you might see here that we have two Kubernetes services, we have a couple of ingresses, nothing fancy. One object is interesting. It's an Argo rollout object that manages one replica set and few pods in, in, the, in the cluster. So, and you can use Argo CD UI to learn more about the, these resources. So if you click on the icon for that resource, you out of the box uh, get like some information about your resource, including uh, the real manifest. And this is pretty much enough for you to understand what's happening with the rollout, except there is a caveat. You, you must know the YAML structure. You have to, you know, scroll down and, and maybe find status of this rollout and understand what it's doing now. You will have to go through the spec to understand what will happen when update happens. And so that requires, it's not the best possible user experience. And we can definitely do better. And uh, thanks to Argo CD extension add-on, we have this new tab called More. If you click on it, you will get a rollout dashboard that visualizes the state of a rollout. And I guess I, I really think this is like way better because without looking at YAML, I immediately know that this rollout is supposed to use Canary deployment in case of a change. Uh, it has eight steps defined in the Canary strategy. Right now we have just a single revision with five pods and I have uh, all of them, uh, all these pods uses this particular image, Argo approach rollout demo and tag is blue. And it's important to remember it because we will be changing it soon. And so we also have visualization of steps. It's kind of not very interesting now because rollout is not running any canary. And to, to demonstrate the real power of that UI, I want to change this rollout and start the canary upgrade. And you will see how, how it's really useful to use this UI to understand what's happening with rollout. And um, of course, there is a simple way to make this change. Maybe use kubectl edit. The GitOps way is to go uh, into the Git repository, make a change in a YAML file. But we are here to see the power of add-ons, and that's why I will be using uh, Argo CD image updater. And just as a reminder, the, the goal of the project is to automatically make the changes in Git for you. And I will have to run a couple more CLI commands to do it. 
I will do it now and explain what, what I did. So the first command is just a kubectl patch that disables autosync. I do it for the sake of demo so that you can see you know, what is happening, so it would not be instantly. And the next command, uh, it, it's another patch to the application set that inject a set of annotations. And as Jesse mentioned, we use annotations to, to enable the features provided by, by the <coughs> add-ons. And let's take a look at the annotations. Annotations are here. So I have a JSON patch that was used in the kubectl patch command. And so we have uh, not so much stuff here. We have two groups of annotations. One explain image updater, how exactly uh, images should be managed. And next, uh, an another annotation for notifications that will enable Slack notifications. And let me go through it a little bit in, in more details. So uh, this particular annotation explains to image updater that we want to manage this image. And the next annotation explains that uh, the changes are supposed to be committed back to Git. And I chose to uh, commit these changes into a separate branch, just so that you can see it before it gets merged. Uh, I also specified a pretty simple update strategy called name, and what it does, it just lists all the tags, compare them as strings, and pick the latest. So it's not real life, and basically, uh, I would encourage you to use something else. For example, Semver, uh, yes. So you, you can, if your tags are following Semver uh, uh, notation, I would use that. And finally, uh, notifications. It's even simpler than image updater. So what I'm, that annotation is saying is that we want to get notified about the syncing process on an application, and message should be sent to Slack into that channel. So it's, it's pretty simple, and the goal is, basically, this, these annotations end users are supposed to apply, and we're hoping that it's a simple enough experience for, for, from end user perspective. Uh, okay, so next check. So because we applied this, uh, annotations already, the work should be done already for us, and we should have get a change in, uh, in the branch. And luckily it happened. So we GitHub detected a new commit in a branch. If I click create pull request button, you can preview what is uh, about to be changed, and you will see a Argo CD application specific file that has a uh, set of settings that explain to customize that image should be, uh, the image tag should be changed to yellow. And I'm, I'm just going, I like it, basically, this is what I expected to see. So I'm going to approve and, and merge this PR. Nice. And we are ready to go back to uh, Argo CD. So Argo CD uh, checks Git every three minutes by default. I don't want to wait three minutes, so I'm just going to click refresh button. Give it a couple seconds to detect a change. So we can use UI to preview what has changed. And basically, as expected, the image is, not, is no longer matching to what we have in Git. And Argo CD did nothing so far because I disabled automatic syncing. And so I will just sync it manually. And hopefully, in within a few seconds, it will kubectl apply uh, all the changes, and rollout should notice the change. Yes, and, and, and it should start you know, executing the uh, canary strategy. And this is the moment where you finally can see the power of this UI. So it's now self-explanatory that uh, <clears throat> there is canary uh, upgrade happening live, and so this panel now make more sense. So you can see that we are at the step two, actually. First is already completed. And so the first step was supposed to uh, roll out, it, it was supposed to create a new version of application, but it should have only 20% of all the ports we have. And you can see that we did get second revision, which has only one port. The previous revision has four. And right now we are at the stage where rollout waiting for human approval to, to approve and progress the rest of, um, of the canary, canary upgrade process. 
and I promised notifications and we've got them. So like a minute ago, we got two notifications, one about, <coughs> sorry, one about the started uh, rollout process and second about uh, successful completion of rollout canary step number one. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the demo. I, before I switch it to you to, for questions, I wanted to show you a couple more slides. Yeah, so demo is done. And I wanted to share with you some information about uh, what it takes to create an extension and how you can work on it to add visualization of custom resource you care about in Argo CD. So, of course, you will have to install um, the add-on itself, and this is the, the first URL. It's just a you know, pointer to a readme file which has installation instructions. The second URL is a, a, a sample extension that you can use as a quick way to get started. So you can just fork the repo and, and start writing code. You would have to write some JavaScript and if you know React, it should be straightforward, shouldn't be very difficult, uh, shouldn't be very difficult. If you want really fancy extension, we can help you as well. Uh, so the last URL is a GitHub repository that has a set of reusable React components that we already use to build Argo workflows, Argo rollout and Argo CD UI, as well as Argo rollout extensions UI uses the same library. And so what that library is, uh, is, as I said, it's a set of React components and all of them look like Argo. That's why you don't have to repeat the same, of, you know, same CSS styles if you want your extension to be kind of fit nicely into Argo UI. And this is not the end. We, we are like, really excited about that feature and we plan to keep working on it. We are hoping to get more extension types, uh, the ones that you can embed into sidebar, application level extensions, and we are already working on a, another way to extend Argo CD. Uh, we call this feature Config Management Plugins V2, an idea that we want end users to be able to add support for config management tools such as uh, CDK, Otanka by Grafana in Argo CD UI and get kind of almost uh, first class user experience. And this is it. This is end of the demo and the presentations. Thank you for listening. And Thanks, guys. Uh, I have a microphone here. Questions? Uh, raise your hand. I'll try to run around. We'll get first first one over here. Um, so thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what is the difference between Argo CD notifications and uh, Argo events? Uh, actually, Argo events are to consume events and do and create a Kubernetes resource. That's how I understand it. So idea that it can connect to a lot of sources and eventually create resource. And I guess the most frequently created resource is Argo workflow. And so Argo, notific Argo CD notifications kind of only support one source, which is a CRD that it watches and uh, you know, react on changes. But it kind of, it, so you cannot uh, select the source, but you have a variety of destinations where the notification can be delivered. It could be Slack, Telegram. Actually, there is more, more than a dozen already, including, uh, I don't know, up to the Jira uh, and GitHub integration. And we actually have a talk about this tomorrow. And yeah, I encourage you to, to visit it. Uh, you showed us earlier the, the Canary uh, percentage, right, in the, in the dashboard. How do you do that with Argo CD? Do you play around with the number of replicas in Kubernetes, or do you maintain some traffic routing, or how, how do you do that in Argo CD? Yeah. Um, so it's, this is actually powered by Argo rollouts, which you don't need Argo CD uh, to do it. But the way rollouts works is um, it does integrate with, um, like, ingress uh, controllers or service meshes. But for what I call the, the basic canary, you don't uh, need that. And um, the way it works is if you want a certain percentage of traffic to reach the new version, um, you can think about it as we just deploy the percentage of pod, overall pods of that new version, and then we pause. Um, so 
I like to describe it as a like a, a way that a slower, controlled rolling update, uh, and that's how we uh, that that's that's a basic canary for rollout. Yeah. Uh, question. So, if we use Argo CD extension, uh, is it possible to utilize Argo CD RBAC as well? Because Argo CD already have RBAC mechanism, right? Yeah, I guess that was one of the benefits we wanted to to have. So you don't have to, you know, uh, re-implement your owner back. You can rely on Argo CD, and it won't let users who are not supposed to, you know, observe application state. They won't. They won't see content by uh, extension. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, so we, we're just starting to look at Argo CD, and one of the things that, from security perspective, we wanted to kind of see if we can build our own extension or like what we can do is basically we don't want our Kubernetes clusters or anything running on our cluster be able to talk to our code repositories, right? Because mm -hmm. if the Kubernetes cluster is compromised, you know, the surface area is huge at that point. So <clears throat> what we wanted to do was, put, you know, have our, our, our um, repositories push our manifests, right? We could use customize, whatever it is. At the end of the day, it's a bunch of YAML, push that to S3, and then Argo, source of truth now, instead of GitHub or code repository, it becomes S3. Mm -hmm. And it does everything that it does, just like replacing GitHub or whatever it is with mm -hmm. S3. And I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on, um, on that? Yeah, so Argo CD already supports at least two types of sources. One is Git, and second, Helm chart. And the criteria, like, we wanted, in order to for the source, uh, we need to make sure this source has some notion of versioning. Basically, and, and S3, I guess, it's, like, it's a hard requirement for S3. I think, like, in your case, I would recommend to run a sidecar in Argo CD repo server. That sidecar can, uh, you know, uh, continuously download S3 con bucket content. And if it is, let's say, a tarball of the like, Git repository, you can unzip it into you know local file system and point Argo CD to that file system. And I, I just know that trick because I think I spoke with one of the users and they did that. So Argo CD can it doesn't care where your repo is. It can be just on a local file system. And yeah. First of all, thank you for building Argo CD. It's a great tool. Um, I was just curious, in terms of extensions, have you given some thought to secret management? I know there are already some tools out there, but it feels like Argo CD is quite comprehensive, but secret management is missing. Yeah, I can take that. Um, yeah, secrets is a common uh, issue. I think I would say overall with just GitOps, not necessarily Argo CD. Um, and because Every organization has their different postures and uh, tools and stuff that um, they prefer to use um, for managing secrets. And um, it's, it's possibly easy to get down on like a rabbit hole of, of adding integrations, right, to like Vault or AWS Secrets Manager, all these things. And um, thus far, we um, wanted to avoid that integration rabbit hole. Um, it's, also, it's also the reason why Notification spun out as a, as a separate project, too, because, you know, there's no end to notification services that, um, that you could end up supporting. So um, I do think there's, there's a future where, um, you know, there is something like a Argo notifications, but for secrets, right? Like an a extensible way where um, organizations should, can bring in what they want to use for their secret management. Um, and and uh, plug it into Argo CD. We just didn't want to build that direct integration into Argo CD Core because we actually learned our lesson with config management, um, where we first supported uh, KSonnet and then JSON, and then we could start getting requests for Tonka and all these things. So the idea is that we want to do this in an extensible way, where we don't have a strong uh, built-in vendor support, like for specific vendors. There was also a session uh, yesterday called uh, It's a Secret, Managing Your Secrets, the GitOps way, uh, talking about an Argo CD Vault plugin. So if you missed that, that might be worth looking into um, as well. And with that, I think we're, we're out of time. So 
If you have any more questions, please take them outside, uh, clear the room, and we'll continue the discussion outside. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.